Hello, this is John from CaveOfProgramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at copy constructors in C++. So um, I've got this class here, which I used in the last tutorial. And very simply, it's got, uh, it's got one uh, instance member here, string name. It's got a method called setName that sets that name. And it's also got a method called speak, which just uh, uses cout to output the name of this object. So I'm going to use this here. Let's create a animal object. Let's say animal animal one. Um, yeah, I'll just do that. And let's do animal one dot set name. Freddy. And I'm going to declare another animal variable here. Let's say animal animal two, and I'm going to set that equal to animal one. And let's do um, let's do animal one dot speak and animal two dot speak, and let's see what we've got here. So our second animal just uses the equals operator to assign animal1 to animal2. So if I run this, we should see that we've got two animals named Freddy here, and we do. If I change the name of the second animal, animal2.setName to Bob, and we run this, then we find that we, we can set this, the name of the second animal independently because this is a genuinely new animal. Uh, let's, let's add a constructor here to shed a bit more light on what's actually going on here in detail. So if I add a constructor, let's call it animal and let's implement it in line here just so we can easily see it. I'm going to put in here just to see out, see out animal created. So if we run this, then we get one animal created. And yet, as you can see here, we do have two animals. We are able to set the name on the second animal. It didn't affect the first animal. So we genuinely have two separate animal objects here. And yet, the constructor's only been called for one of them. And we saw that the constructor uh, normally it's called whenever an object is uh, is instantiated. So why are we not getting the second constructor being called here? And the answer to that is that we're implicitly invoking a different constructor called the copy constructor uh, when we assign this animal1 to animal2. So we do have two objects, but this is using a different constructor. Uh, and that constructor is actually setting the fields found in animal 1, uh, setting the fields in animal 2 to whatever's found in animal 1, where it's doing the best job it can. So C++ has implicitly created a special constructor for us called the copy constructor, whose job is to copy the settings from one object to another. But we can explicitly define that ourselves. And if you're going to copy your objects, or you're going to assign them with equals like this. That is a very good thing to do. Let's, let's define a copy constructor explicitly. So a copy constructor looks like this. We've got animal and then we have a const animal reference like this. Um, I need the ampersand there. Const animal reference and let's call this other and let's put in the implementation again here. So this is our own copy constructor. Let's do uh, C out here animal created by copying endler. So now if we run this, we find that we've got one animal created using this constructor and one animal created here using this constructor. Now the, the purpose of this constructor is to copy the fields of this other animal which will actually be the one on the right hand side of this equals sign to the present animal here that we're actually creating. 
So now because I've created my own copy constructor, the original one would no longer work. So if I look at animal two now, uh, immediately after creating it, if I call speak on it, after I've created it by copying from animal one, we say that it's got a blank, my name is, because we've overridden the default. Uh, we've kind of blanked out, if you like, the default um, copy constructor and created our own, but our new one isn't copying any fields. So we can, nevertheless, and we should, uh, in our own copy constructor, initialize the fields of the present object using this object that's passed in. This object here is going to be this one here on the right, right hand side of the equals sign. So we can do, for example, in this constructor, something like name, that's the name of the present object, equals other dot name. So even though um, name is private, uh, we can refer to it in the copy constructor because we're still in the same class. And private means you can't access fields outside of, outside of the class. But even though this is another object, it's still of the same class. And so we can access private fields here in the copy constructor. Let's check that this works. And we, we hope to see that my name is will now be filled in with Freddy right here after we've created the second animal by copying the first. So if we run this, it says my name is Freddy and later we change it to Bob. Now a better way to deal with this is to use the constructor initialization list. So let's do that. Let's put a colon here. We've seen this before and let's say name and in round brackets we can supply other.name and then we can get rid of this here. That's a more efficient way of doing that. And now if you run this we should see, see the same thing again. We're successfully copying names. So however many fields you have in your, um, in your class, when you create the copy constructor you need to copy them all over um, to, your, to the new object that you'll be creating using this kind of syntax to create a copy of this other object, which is this here. And the, the syntax of the copy constructor, you must have this const animal reference. Uh, so um, we pass in other is a reference. That means it's, it's not a pointer, so we don't need special syntax to refer to its fields or methods, which is good. Uh, it's, it's a reference, so we can refer to it exactly as though we'd really got the object here. But it's a const reference, and that actually means that we can't change this other object, which is what we want. It would be very strange if we, if we did this, and this, which is invoking the copy constructor, somehow changed this other animal on the right-hand side of equals. That's not something that we would want to happen. And that's why the copy constructor has to be de declared const like this. Otherwise, um, I suppose it wouldn't work at all. Uh, the const here actually means that we can't call even any methods on this that are, that are not declared const. Because if you think about it, if you've seen the previous tutorials, you'll know that if we could um, call non-const methods on this other animal here, then uh, potentially those could modify this other animal and again would end up with uh, this kind of statement being able to modify the, the uh, object on the right hand side of the equal sign which is not what we want. So just, just to prove that point, um, we, can, we can't call here other.speak or we can't call any method that's not const. Well this is const, let's just get rid of const and let's save it and let's do project dot build project and we get an error but if we put const back in here we can call const methods within the copy constructor um, even though the object is const the other object is constant um, that does allow us to still call const methods so now we put that back in say this method is constant doesn't modify any of the instance variables now we can call speak because speak is declared const and the reference is to a const object. So now it works. And if we run this, um, we've got animal other.speak being called at, um, at this point. It's getting a bit confusing to see which is which, but that we can see that we can call that now. Let's just delete that because um, we, we don't need it. So I'll get rid of that and save this. Uh, another way 
to explicitly invoke the copy constructor would be like this. So animal, animal, animal three, and let's pass in animal one. So again, that's a valid way of calling the copy constructor. Let's just run this, see that it works. So there we go. So in fact, um, when you use equals, equals is, is an operator that is, in, again, it's implicitly defined for objects. You get like a default implementation of equals that calls the copy constructor. So here, we're, we're in effect, we're calling equals, which calls the copy constructor. Whereas here, we're using the copy constructor directly. So uh, that, I think, is, is it for this tutorial. Um, to, and again, to practice this, uh, define a class and give it, let's say, give it at least two fields. And then um, try seeing what happens when you try playing around just with assigning your object to another object of the same type, like that. And then define the copy constructor and get the copy constructor to work. You can put C out in it to check that it is being invoked when you expect it to be invoked. So get this working using your own copy constructor and try this as well. And also um, you can verify that you can't call non-const methods in your copy constructor because of this const here. It's worth actually checking that, checking that you do get an error if you try to call a non-const method or for that matter, modify um, a field of other here. We can't, we can't do this either, because again, that violates the, the fact that we, this reference is to a const object. So if I put that in there, that's also not gonna work. So have a go, for you, have a go yourself, if you've got that energy, inclination and motivation, try defining your own copy constructor and again, this is something that's used quite a lot in C++. And uh, as always, you won't feel comfortable with it until you've used it quite a bit in your own programs. But if you even just go through this here, type it out and get it working, then that's a really big, important step forward. So until next time, happy coding.